Clint, let's start things off with this massive surge in travel that we've seen. Uh, this is post-pandemic. The pandemic seems like it's very much in the rear view, and the revenge travel maybe has evolved into just regular travel, and there's a lot of it. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like we've we've sort of settled at an elevated level of travel demand. I think a lot of people decided during the pandemic that they were going to travel come heck or high water, and that's what they're doing. And then we also see the return of business travel. So combine those two things, and you're seeing record-breaking crowds. I think Sunday could still be the highest number ever. I talked to the head of the TSA last week, and he said that they were ready and that he felt like it could be a record-breaking day. So we'll see. But very interesting, elevated level of travel demand overall. With, with that in mind, Clint, there have been some highs and lows for, for the airline business overall. We see a lot of demand driving some of these stocks higher, yet we are still seeing a bankruptcy filing for the likes of Spirit and, and them trying to find a way forward to serve those budget-friendly customers. What exactly is the airline dynamic that you see coming in 2025? You know, it's fascinating. I think you're going to see continued fallout for the low-cost carriers. Obviously, we've got the bankruptcy of Spirit. Hopefully, they are either emerging from bankruptcy or someone snaps them up. Um, I do think you're going to see some consolidation among the low-cost carriers. But the real story is the demand for premium travel and how good the mainline carriers have gotten at sort of segmenting their cabins. So they're selling these seats. We could see Delta introduce something like a basic business class fare this year. Very interesting moves on the part of especially Delta to really squeeze every last drop of revenue out of those premium seats. And consumers so far are willing to spend the money for extra leg room, for first class, for business class. Uh, price doesn't seem to be as big an option. And the airlines have gotten better and better at selling those upgrades. So people like me who are uh, elite status travelers who want those free upgrades, we're having to pay for those now. So really interesting time in the airline space. Yeah, of course, Clint, I, I see even on the flights I've taken over the course of the last six months, premium economy is always bustling. It's always full out there. So people are charging more there. I wonder before we let you go, it, it, it's the holiday travel season. Travel Tuesday is coming up. What are the deals that you think are the best for clients for you guys in the, say, the next three to six months? Yeah, I used to dismiss Travel Tuesday as sort of a marketing ploy, but it's gotten really good, especially in the hotel space. So Marriott, Hilton, IHG, you're seeing 25 to 30% off, many bookings uh, going forward. So get in on that. The airlines are not quite as good, but we're still seeing some remarkable deals, especially among budget carriers. You're seeing fares as low as 40 bucks. So take a look around. We're covering all that stuff at the Points Guy really religiously. We just published our update for today. Uh, Flight deals, not as good as hotel deals, but still there's a lot of really nice package deals from British Airways and stuff like that out there. So lots of deals to go around. I think that's going to be the story next year as well.